Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being with us this afternoon. I will stop this presentation, and Elizabeth will uh, follow me. And what we thought we would do is starting with a polling question, uh, just to start with uh, involving you into this presentation. And for that, I will hand over to Michelle. Yes, thank you for that, Baldo. At this point, we do have a polling question for the audience. The audience can vote on this in real time by clicking on your screen. The question we are asking is, is quantifying the ROI of ECOA a priority in your organization? Your options are yes, we have a process for this. Yes, but it is a challenge. No, it is not a priority. Or not sure. And I'll give the audience a few minutes to vote. Again, the question is, is quantifying the ROI of ECOA a priority in your organization? Options again are yes, we have a process, yes, but it's a challenge, no, it is not a priority, and not sure. And it looks as if most of our audience has voted, and so I will close that and share the results. Looks like yes, we have a process for this is at 5%. Yes, but it is a challenge is at 32% leading the score. No, it is not a priority is at 5%. And then not sure is at 58%. And with that, I'll hand that back to you, Waldo. OK, thank you. So I'm sure we will um, all discuss about the ROI again, but it's good to know that um, most of you are not sure whether there is a, a process into quantifying the, the ROI. So I will start with data quality and in increased compliance and monitoring savings. And here is the agenda of what I will talk today. We'll start with semantics, because semantics is always important. We'll jump into regulatory recommendation. A question that is often asked is, where are we with EPRO, ECO, or whatever? what we call patient e-data adoption. And we will uh, say a few words about that. Then we will enter into the bulk of the presentation, which is the things that are close to my heart, increase data quality and reduce dropouts. And finally, we will uh, discuss about some comparison of monitoring costs for ECOA versus paper. But let's start with the semantic first. Um, in my talk, I will certainly, when we started 15 years ago, we were talking about e-diary, electronic diary. Then e-pro became uh, very trendy when the FDA issued the first draft guidance in beginning of 2006 about e-pro. And uh, it was well defined in this FDA pro guidance as any report of the status of a patient's health condition that comes directly from the patient. And for a while, we've been talking about EPRO a lot. And then uh, recently, somebody came with uh, the idea that, in fact, we were not only uh, collecting EPRO, but we were collecting more than EPRO. And it's true that electronic clinical outcome assessment, or ECOA, are done of EPRO, of eClean rows, of eOps rows, and of performance reported outcomes. So, uh, it's it's more than EPRO that we are collecting, um, especially with uh, more and more uh, tablet study where we report clinician reported outcome at the at the visit. So we started to talk about eCOA. But in fact, even if COA is better than PRO, there are some data that we collect uh, that are even not COA. Uh, clinical outcomes in general are made of uh, three things. Uh, clinical outcome assessment that we recently saw, biomarkers, and survival. And in fact, as you may know, uh, there is more and more biomarkers that we are collecting in clinical trials directly from the patient, and it certainly will continue to increase because of all the devices that people are more and more used uh, to use themselves at home. Um, Examples are uh, glucometers to collect glycemia or a PEF meter to collect uh, FEV1 or PEF, and certainly these are biomarkers. So, in fact, 
that why we come with the theme of patient-driven e-data because it's more than e-pro and it's more than e-coa. However, probably I'm uh, in my talk I will use one or the other, so uh, forgive me for that. Um, it's it's about all the same in my mind, even though it's not the case. Let's talk about regulatory. Um, when we started again 15 years ago, there was a survey that was asked uh, to uh, people from the pharma industry saying, in your opinion, what is the reason why uh, there is not a greater adoption of ePro? Um, what are the obstacles? And number one of the obstacles was, number one answer was fear of regulatory. And it has been uh, sweet to see that over the years, not only regulatory is not an obstacle anymore, but it's rather the other way around. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I mentioned the, the FDA uh, Pro Guidance um, draft in 2006, final in 2009, guidance for industry patient reporting outcome measures. There have been other paper from the FDA, there have been a, a guidance for industry uh, in IBS, clinical evaluation of drugs for treatment. There's also been an FDA guidance for industry on electronic source data in uh, clinical trials uh, and a roadmap. From the EMA, as, as early as 2000 already, there was a guidance on clinical investigation of steroid contraceptive in women where it was indicated that although not mandatory, it was recommended to use something to collect and to avoid missing data, the use of an electronic um, format was recommended uh, in order to, again, not to miss data. And two years later, another guidance, this time um, on the clinical investigation of medicine.